Welcome to the Kaufman Connect. Um, Chief Freitag is away this week uh, down at the CEOP training in Phoenix. And so I am back. And a uh, nice thing is we have Chief Schuster on with, who has been just eager to get on the podcast, which is fantastic. So thank you for, for being here today. Yeah, I'm glad I was able to fight my way to get in here. <laughs> you had to fight everybody in the hallway, huh, to get in. Like, yep. You were selected, so thank you. Yeah. We appreciate it. Um, you haven't been on here before, have you? No. Welcome. It's against my religion. Yep. Well, that's all right. We appreciate you uh, stepping up. You do have a radio, though, so you will may get a call because you're on duty today. So that could be fun. You're hoping for a call right now, aren't you? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, t- today we're going to talk about something that affects um, our internal you know, personnel, uh, but also the, the public at large and a project that you have been working on um, for a while now. Before we do that, though, tell us briefly about you. How long have you been with uh, CY, C- Chino Valley and then CAFMA? How many years now? For almost 18 years. 18 years, all right. Yeah. How many years of battalion chief now? Four. Four as a battalion yeah, chief? Almost four. Enjoying it? No. <laughs> Not at all? You want to no. go back? No, it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> Everything has its perks, but yeah, it's fun. Sure. Good. No, we appreciate, uh, yeah, you're going to be one of the most tenured BCs here pretty soon as we see just a shift in uh, that BC core with retirements and everything like that. Chief Abel just uh, retired, and uh, you've taken over with the help of some other folks, the Wildland Program, too. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty scary if I'm going to be our... I'm going to be our senior <laughs> BC. Oh, no, no. <laughs> not, uh, not scary at all. This is good good, uh, good for the future. Um, with that, though, the, the software that I kind of mentioned from the very beginning was the Live Mom software. Uh, you've been working hard with uh, uh, PRCC, which is our regional communication center, in trying to get this initiated. Just kind of give a brief overview for our personnel listening and uh, also the public at large. Yeah, the, I guess we started – this process long, long time ago. It could have been sure. ten years ago if you wanted to make numbers up of just seeing why we move up and yeah, what reasons we move up for. So we started, I guess, officially probably a year and a half ago and talked to a couple of different companies about seeing what, 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 what we can do to 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 add science, I guess, behind mm-hmm. why we move up. And we landed on this Live Mum company who's been awesome so far. Knock on wood. Hope they keep doing a great job and. It's been, it's been a lot of work to put it together, but I guess yeah. ultimately we're going to put the objectives that kind of Prescott and CAFMA came up with as far as yep. why, why do we want to move up, for what reasons. And so that, that's pretty much the long and short of what it is and what it's going to, what it's going to help. It's going to give us a reason why that we're moving up. So Correct. We're moving towards the calls instead of away from the calls. Yep. type of deal. No, I think that's awesome because uh, folks sometimes don't realize how much work goes in the background, you know, to a project like this. Uh, you've spent countless hours, um, you know, just even last shift, uh, you spent countless hours in PRCC working with all the little nuances that people aren't going to necessarily realize. The intent of this whole project, um, I think, you know, you helped put together just the objectives for that, that we, you know, came in line with Prescott and everybody with was we want to reduce the move ups. And, uh, you know, keep engines from just moving up arbitrarily to different areas, which a move up for anybody that's listening is just moving an engine out of their station to an area where we expect that another call to be. In the past, that was based on static policy where we just, you know, would assume like, hey, we think there's going to be more of a call there. This live mum software is bringing more of a science to that. Can you explain a little bit on what that looks like? Yeah, I guess just brief. There's there's a lot of things in the back back side of it, but it takes into account like the the percent chance that there's going to be a call. And when we say a call, it's emergency calls. So yeah. not that all the other calls in our emergencies don't matter, but the emergency ones are the ones obviously that we want. We want to be there in yep. a timely manner. Yep. We have our response standards, which we've kind of agreed upon with Prescott Fire as far as what we want our response standards to be. So there's a there's an urban, a rule, and a, and a wilderness response standard. So we're trying yep. to meet that our response standards. Along with not, it's l- along with not moving up people a lot, so it takes into a lot of it takes into account the kind of call that the crew's on. Yeah. So all all of them have a time adjusted to them from the last one, two, or three years, depending on the data. So some some calls have we already have three thousand calls worth of data, and then some like um, I don't know, 
whatever, a call sure. that we don't have very often. Yeah. We only have a couple. Yeah. So yep. it'll continue to get better, but it takes that into account. It takes into account the percent chance that there's going to be a call in the area we're going to. Yeah. And we, we set that at 20 for now, but that's that's something that we can kind of tweak and change yep. as we go. Yep. It takes into account the time of day, the day, the day of the week. So from statistical, statistically, obviously we've run less calls at Sunday at two in sure. the morning than we do Monday at nine in the morning. So yeah, yeah. It takes all that stuff in, into account, the response capabilities of the engines and where they're going. And for now, it's just the engines and the trucks that yeah. are under this someday, you know, maybe we'll wharf into some other stuff. But yeah, yeah I think that's, is is pretty brief, but I sure. think you get way in the weeds <clears throat> if you get into how it actually yeah. works. There's a lot of stuff. No doubt. It, there's a lot, sure. like you say, there's a lot behind the scenes and a lot that you've done to help uh, just get this to work as seamlessly as possible. I know that um, there's going to be some growing pains as we initiate this, which the goal is to have uh, before this podcast even released that this is initiated and we're using the system. Um, the, the other part that we want to try to bring into the the process is just consistency as well. Because, you know, um, go back to just using the, the data behind, you know, the science of that move up. It's looking at a lot of different things from the, even the how long we are typically on those type of calls. So if it's a, a cardiac, you know, chest pain, it's looking at history to say typically, you know, you're on those calls for half an hour. If you transport, it's an hour. Whatever it is, it's looking at that information and saying, okay, you know, based on the percentage of another call happening, you should move up an apparatus or you may not need to because the percentage is higher in the area that they're already in. I think uh, what I like about this is it takes it away from a static policy that, you know, dispatchers in the, the PRCC even have to know to a program that's going to make a recommendation on real time uh, information on what's going on. So uh, hopefully it uh, rolls out uh, to exactly the way we hope. Um, if nothing else, I know just the work you've done in the background will continue to look at it because this is going to be, you know, a continue, continued project as we try to dial in those numbers. Again, it's just trying to put our limited resources in an area where they're the most effective. And I, I'm, I'm confident that this will, you know, help us do that better than what we have now. So... Yeah, it, it will. It'll definitely eventually. Like we've heard yeah. all the words of the trust the system and then I, and I, have, I, I absolutely wouldn't say trust the system. Sure. I would say let's do it here, yes. for the, especially these first yep. few months as dispatchers, as Prescott Fire, as, as CAFMA. Let's, let's do it. And then if there's things that we need to tweak, we yes. need to know about them so we can tweak them. And then yep. we'll, I think we'll have a good system pretty quick, I would expect. I would, I would expect plenty of hiccups starting tomorrow morning when we start sure. just because we've, we've been testing this a long time, but there's there's going to be stuff that we couldn't see happen until we run it live. But Yeah, and I think that's with everything that we do, constantly looking at it, reevaluating, and this is going to be no different. And uh, folks will just have to be patient as we work through some of the kinks, but I think the long-term goal will be good. I think the long-term update to our response system is going to be very good. So, Awesome. Kathy, um, before we close it out, I, I haven't uh, said anything. We've done pretty good to keep this to a minimum. We'll make sure we, we highlight that to Chief Freitag on what can be done uh, in 10 minutes or less. Yes, we must brag. Perfect. You must brag, yes. Indeed. Um, with that, we'll close it out. Uh, Chief Freitag should be back next week. He's down at a leadership training where we have several of our members uh, attending, and that'll be down in Phoenix. But uh, with that, stay safe. Uh, Work hard and uh, be humble. Have a great week.